Yes, sir, operator. Oh, that's your party will call right back. Thank you. Oh, operator. Uh, where was the call place from? Which beach? Thank you. Look, some people are after me. Look, they're trying to kill me. See if the local police can come up with anything that might tie in. A couple questions. What are you doing? I'm asking you questions, man. All huh? right, all right. Uh, you were here this morning, didn't you? Sure, 5.30. Yeah. Why, what's going on? It's a homicide. The body's over there where the crowd is gathered. When you got here this morning, did you uh, find anything unusual or anything different? I wouldn't notice anything. I'm into a training cycle now. All I can think of is... Concentration. I can dig that. So, uh, you didn't see anything at all, right? I have to ignore the externals. <clears throat> all I can think about now is my buddy. Until after the quarterfinals. Well, I think you're doing good, man. Good luck to you. Was he exactly like right him when you found him? Exactly. I mean, I didn't touch a thing. I could see he was dead, even though it was still dark out. What were you doing out on the beach before daylight? Summer hours. I, I make a run ahead of the cleaning rigs. They can't see the ground because of the scoop. I mean, we've run over guys sleeping on the beach. Have you ever seen this kid before, hanging around the beach that you know of? No. Not sure. Yeah, I'm positive. I've never seen him. The first time I saw him was this morning, just the way he is. OK, thanks very much. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, Investigator Styles, you have a tenant in this building? Yeah. Well, uh, not exactly. What do you mean? I stay, uh, I got some friends up on the third floor. Look, boy was murdered last night about 100 yards from here, right over there on the beach. Yeah, I heard about that. Man, it sure bummed me out. I'd like to question the people in the building. I just can't walk right in. Good citizens might get nervous, flush their stash down the toilet, and make all those crazy panic moves. You yeah, panic. No, I'm not narcotics or vice or the juvenile department. I just want to ask some questions. Did you spread the word around? Hey, now you missing the whole point. I'm looking for a psycho killing kids on the beach. It's your beach. You know the kid in the plastic bag was about your age? I'm just trying to catch the killer, put him on the brain ranch before he hits again. That's all. Wait. Death by asphyxiation. Somebody twisted his arm behind him till it broke. He shoved his face in the sand and held it there. 
The MO is different from our other beach murders. I had one at Santa Barbara like this not too long ago. Similar, yeah. But most of our victims were discovered on the more secluded beaches. This guy was right here on a public beach. Police responded to a disturbance call last night. Oh? He came from over there on Windward Street. They didn't find anything. Do they know who placed the call? It came from a used hotline switchboard a few minutes from here. What, uh, what was the time of day? Approximately midnight. That's when the call came in. Where are Pete and Joe? They split in both directions. They wanted to cover as much of the beach as possible before it filled up, but <laughs> I guess they didn't make it. Hey. Got a quarter? Do I have a quarter? I tell you what, I'll give you a quarter for a hug. Sure. Mm. All right. Thanks, officer. Broke his arm and buried his face in the sand? Yeah. Wouldn't really be that tough, Pat. He was pretty small, thin, 14 or 15. You want to check out the youth hotline? Yeah, let's do it now. That's right. Methadone take home right privileges now, are just to, to save you the daily trip. Okay, it's five, he won't believe five, you anyhow. Five, Grass eight, won't show up on the urinalysis. Yes, I'm positive. I'm sorry. Yes, I heard about the kid on the beach. Now, how can I help you? Did you call the police last night? Yes. A boy called in just after midnight. He was scared. But I could tell it wasn't a bad drug trip. He said they were trying to kill him. That he'd seen them kill another kid. Did, uh... Did he say who they were? No, he just said they. So what did you do? Well, I offered to call his parents, but he said he'd tried that. He told me to get the police. Then he dropped the phone, and I heard the door go, and then a dial tone. Any voices? Anything else? No. Isn't it terrible? Missing kids turn out to be dead kids. Yeah, there have been an awful lot of them lately. Last week, it was some girl. A missing girl. Hotline, on the coast highway, all busted up. She went on the report as a hit and run victim. Hello, hotline. Call was placed at twelve fourteen for anyone to collect from Gary. I got a hold of one of the parents, and the description matches. I have to ask him to identify the body. It's a tough one to put through the phone. The description matches. Santa Barbara's only a couple hours drive. I'll go with you. Want me to? I'm Paul Lewin. How you do, sir? I'm Sergeant Crowley. This is Sergeant Anderson. I assume this is about Gary. <clears throat> That's right, sir. Look, if I'm going to need my lawyer... I, not at this point. How long has it been since you've seen your son, Mr. Lewin? About two months. Gary ran away from home. I think this last time made it an even dozen. Then you have no idea where he is, huh? None at all. He tried to call me last night, but he hung up before I could talk to him. And he'll call back. Look, I realize that I don't uh, qualify as concerned parent of the month to you, but I have played this scene several times before. You must understand. I'm sure you work with plenty of juveniles. The questions we're asking are in connection with a homicide case. Homicide? A young man was murdered in the beach area. We think it might be your son, sir. I have some photographs here if you'd care to look at them. Oh, my God. Six months ago, Gary ran away from home. Again. He was gone for two weeks. And I got a call from this fellow Curry representing the Youth Foundation. He has him. He, uh, he said he located my son. He wanted to talk to me. So I drove down to check out the foundation, and I enrolled Gary. Was it expensive? It's a flat fee of $25,000. Half an enrollment and the balance in a year, if the boy did not run away. And if he did, the foundation would locate him and put him back in training. What was the training program like? Oh, it was athletics, manual crafts, they had a lot of intensive counseling. I guess they called it retraining or, or uh, 
reprogramming. When Gary called, I was... I just assumed he was back at the Foundation. Mr. Lewin, there will be an investigation. You can help us if you don't talk to Mr. Curry. So if he tries to contact you, just let us know, will you please? Oh, sure. Reprogramming, retraining. No matter how you slice it, it still smells like brainwashing to me. Are you up on brainwashing? Just the North Korean variety. That's mostly a case of push and shove and listen to the same thing until that's all you could hear. Mm. Some of them uh, didn't live through it, did they? No. Do you remember what the boy said about killing? Yeah, he said that they were trying to kill him. He'd already seen him kill another kid. I'd like to learn more about reprogramming. Can you hear me? I'll do anything you want. Really? Do you have to let me out of here? a wiener for you. If you operate a crash pad for kids, you do not need juvenile authority unless you claim county or state aid. Well, from this information, these centers can avoid a business licenses and a lot of paperwork by filing as a nonprofit organization. Now, here's one that's hard to believe. It's a Curry Youth Foundation. Lists seven employees and not one has been checked for a criminal record. It's not required. It's not? Nope. All they need is approval from the Department of Health. I never realized that. These centers operate under no supervision, no controls. Did you know that? You gotta be a lawyer just to hand out a parking ticket, Pip. For sure. Those are the rules. Whatever they are, Mr. Curry is complying with existing regulations. You can't fault him for that. No check for criminal records. None. All right. You're all night long waiting for this. Pretty healthy leg. Play a lot of football? No. no. A little soccer. Pep, I usually go along with your instincts. But I haven't yet figured out a way inside the foundation. It's a lot more than instinct. We have positive indications that Positive in enough there. to hold our interest, but not for a search warrant. So what do we have? Nothing? Nothing. We may have to wait for the next move. What is that? Well, Pete thinks it's a cross of hot chocolate and onion soup. I make it out to be consomme and tea. What do you think, William? I think the coffee machine's out to get us all. You know, Pep, there's a saying for that kind of smile. Cheshire. Cheese or cat? It's rather uncomplicated. There are facts existing inside the Foundation which must be brought to light. This will be brought to you today through the medium of a reporter asking questions at the front door. Sometimes you remind me of my third grade elocution teacher. You planning on doing your Barbara Walters routine again? It's worth a try. No, Pep Curry's not gonna let you in just for publicity. Especially if he's involved in the kid's death. And besides, Pep, everybody's not gonna go for the baby browns, you know? Uh I'd give her an interview. You would. See? It might work. You know, if a reporter showed up asking questions, Curry just might think this is a bad time to say no. Particularly if it's a pushy, aggressive national magazine like The National Woman. Which just happens to be published back in New York, right? That would give us time to salt in your cover before they could check you out. Maybe. OK, Barbara, what would you say to open him up? I'm doing a feature article for The National Woman I'll be writing about youth foundations, and I'd like it to be accurate. I'm sorry, I don't give interviews. Then why don't you listen to me? I can't be writing about West Coast youth centers without mentioning you and your youth center. 
Now, your competitors have plenty to say about you, so I have enough material for a real hatchet job. But I want to be fair to our subscribers and to you. Now, all I have so far are a few rumors and uh, a turndown for an interview. I wouldn't want to print it that way. You're not trying to intimidate me. Me? Intimidate you? Oh, you'd never let me get away with that. I'll give you ten minutes. Terrific. Yeah, well, she walked right in with no hassle. Yeah, well, you could read that either way. But, uh, you know Pepper, she took care of herself. There we are. Thank you. I, I really do appreciate your time. Not at all. Uh, do you mind if I tape? All right. Oh, no, I don't mind at all. The clock's on you. You've got ten minutes. <laughs> Thank you. I really want to be accurate, so... I kind of prefer it, actually. Thank you. Uh, well, in your opinion, how did you become so successful? We know what we're doing. We work hard at it, just like any other field, and we've gotten this big because we understand kids. Mm -hmm. And are your services expensive? Sometimes. All of our income is classed as contributions, but I have to adjust some of the charges because some of the people can't pay. But I never accept a contribution unless we can produce results. How do you do that? Well, you have to understand the motivations with runaways. They're usually running to something, not away. They're running to new experiences, new lifestyles. That's very interesting. Well, continue. Please go on. Well, the most difficult cases are the kids who are running back to groups or orders who've had them before. And it's, um, well, there must be a dozen groups like, uh, like that out there. And they're offering kids well, spiritual highs, eternal life. Then they bend their heads and put them out in the street with a cup or have them sell incense or flowers. Parents bring me kids who won't go home or who won't stay there if you take them. And my program brings them around to the original values, reorients them to the meaningful things in life. It sounds like brainwashing. No. Brainwashing is what they get from the chanters, the loonies. I simply give them common sense counseling, a chance to think it over. That simple? Mm-hmm. What do you expect? Something complicated. True. And what's your ratio of uh, girls to boys? Well, uh, that varies. Right now, it's 40-60. Uh, mm -hmm. And do you have any women on your staff? Yes, a lady psychologist and two companion matrons. Is this you? <laughs> yes. My picture. Well, it uh, was taken a long time ago. Korea. Are your readers interested in sports? Yes, we have a sports department. Whoa. Actually, basketball is a very good game because you get a lot of body contact. Got the girls over here. energy. When they get serious, they look like the Lakers. When do you go back east? 
Oh, tomorrow, the day after. Might stay and soak up some of this California sunshine. There's a pool at the Excelsior. Well, if you need some more information, why don't you give me a call? I have all I need, thank you. I've worked very hard. I'm really very tired. Well, if you, uh... Maybe I could call you for a drink. Maybe that's why I told you where I was staying. <laughs> thank you. Sure. What's wrong with Pamela? I don't know. She's not responding. Put her back into isolation. She's a very high-strung girl. I'm not sure. I'm sure. Put her back into the chamber right now and phone some of the youth centers and find out if they've been approached by the National Woman magazine. Bob. What did you talk to that reporter for? Brushing her off could have meant more attention. And I wanted to look her over. Pamela. Where's Pamela? We'll call the magazine in the morning. I was thinking about something for tonight. I've got to watch everything. If they connect Gary with the foundation. After the first one, they're all numbers. <laughs> I dozed off. What time is it? It's time to pack it in, kid. I guess the fish aren't biting, huh? Well, I'm not getting too sunburned. Why don't I give it another hour or so, okay? Have you turned up anything? Uh, neither Cody nor Curry has a criminal record. I got Pete talking to an ex-employee, and I got Joe out checking Curry's service record. I'm just leaving to check out a complaint filed against the foundation. Mm-hmm. You got anything for me? <laughs> what have I got for you? Why don't you just knock it off for the day? I hate to see a lady work overtime. Okay, thanks, Bill. Like I said, Pamela's mother remarried, a dentist with two kids. Pamela just uh, never felt comfortable there. Okay, thank you. Sir, <clears throat> tell us, why did you file the complaint? When I found that my ex-wife put Pamela into that uh, youth foundation, I tried to see her, but I hit a brick wall. They said it would uh, disturb her therapy. Is there any way that you could make a home for the girl? I'd sure try. Then why don't you? The courts won't permit it. She's got legal custody. Look, I've got a home near here, but most of the time I'm on the road. I filed that complaint that I didn't know what this Curry Foundation was or what they were doing with her. But now I'm really worried. What's going on? We're just conducting an investigation of the place. Well, is there anything I can do? I really can't think of anything right now, sir. I tell you, thank you very much for your cooperation with the Touch. Okay. Well, please let me know if I can. Ah, uh, yes, room service, please. Uh, this is room 412. I just placed an order. I'd like to cancel it. I'm going to have dinner in the dining room instead. Thank you very much. Bill? Yeah, what do you got? I just got off the phone, and I thought you might like to know that Curry did receive a full medical disability discharge from the Army. He stopped receiving his checks when uh, he failed to appear for his periodical checkups. That's very interesting. Yes, and he was a patient at the VA hospital, psychiatric section. I wonder what he was treated for. Well, it certainly wasn't athlete's foot, I know that. The VA would have copies of his medical records. It's probably too late to date. Why don't you get on the first thing in the morning? Well, ordinarily, that's true, but in this case, I, uh... Happen to know a nurse who thinks I make a wonderful doctor. Why don't you go on? Oh, 
Oh, hi. I just uh, tried to call you on the house phone, but you must have been on your way down. Did you make any plans for dinner? I was thinking of maybe just grabbing a sandwich in the dining room, then heading back tonight. I don't find this town very friendly. <sighs> I'm sorry about today, but if you knew how many muckrakers I get coming around that foundation trying to do a smear job on me. You know, I even get competitors spying on me, trying to figure out how I operate. Really? Yeah. Gotta be careful. Now, how about relax? I will have a very nice dinner, and I'll tell you everything that you want to know. I got the car right outside. Thank you. Freeze, turkey. Put all that away, Peach. I'm just cooperating with the police. Just the police, huh? That's what our relationship has come to after all this time. There's nobody else, is there? Well, there must be. It's been over a month. Has it really been that long? Well, you came in with that bottle of dandelion wine all up on that big arrest you just made. We were right at this desk. Well, uh, you have to admit it. It was a very beautiful evening. Crowley, the police department. What do you want to do? Bust me? <laughs> I'd uh, just like to ask a few questions. Jam it. I'm concentrating. I was hoping you'd be a little more cooperative. Take a walk. You might accidentally get chopped up. Sorry about it. I think I'll just uh, take a look around. Now you better relax. You know the old saying when you're up to your neck in one of these, don't open your mouth. I'm gonna kill you when I get loose. See what I mean? Just getting in deeper and deeper. All right, outside, outside. This place is occupied. You were listed as an employee of the Curry Youth Foundation. Why'd you get fired? on kids' heads. What kind of numbers? How do I know? He's, he's doing some sort of brainwashing deal. What do you know about Curry? I don't know nothing about him. What about this guy you worked with, Cody? What do you know about him? He used to work out here. Yeah? Give me some more. His name's Coalfield. I think he's wanted back in Ohio. For what? How should I know? That's it. There ain't no more. There ain't no more. OK. How many bricks can you break? What do you mean, how much bricks can I break? How many bricks can you break? Well, we're 14. This really sucks. You gonna give me the cups? Give me the cups. Give me the cups. What do you got, Pete? Curry's been confined in a neuropsychiatric ward a couple of times. 
and about a dozen times it's an outpatient. Anything we can move on? No, not really. All we do know is that his head was really spaced out for a few years. As a matter of fact, his last visit was three years ago. That was supposed to be Pepper's date. Glad he stood her up. Really? How about you, anything? Yeah, another name for Cody. I'm checking it out. Well, I'll be right in. What time do you get off? 6 a.m. Gonna take me out for coffee and a donut. You keep talking like that and I'll put the cuffs on you. Then you know what'll happen. Most of the things that you read about brainwashing are negative. They break you off to the basics. Cut you off from everything that's familiar and secure. Is that how some groups convert runaways? Well, the techniques are a little bit more sophisticated, but the principle's the same. I was talking about Korea in the 50s. You were a prisoner of war? Two years. Look, I've got to stop by the foundation for a minute, OK? Sure. And then we'll get the dinner. Kids turn over their existences to whatever movement has them. And they exclude everyone outside of the group, even their parents. And sometimes they're even sent home to rip off their parents. And you can remove the effect of all that uh, conditioning? Oh, excuse me. I'll be right back. I'm getting a little hungry. Smells phony to me. There are no baggage checks, no labels in her clothes. You keep her there. I'm on my way. Is it dinner time yet? Almost. I'd like to show you something. Have you ever seen an SD chamber? Oh, no. Sensory deprivation. The basis for behavioral modification. Decorator. You may change your mind about that. The containers hold water and a high protein food supplement, vanilla flavored. The temperature is a constant 68 degrees, and the room's completely soundproof. It's amazing that with all the advances in behavior control, this is the most effective and the most humane. This is where you uh, retrain runaways? This is where we begin. I'm starting to get a little nervous in here. Well, you may notice that a little bit more acutely after you've been in here a while. A few people experience absolute quiet and total solitude entire lives. Interesting. After the initial shock of the solitude, you may doze a lot. Then you lose all sense of time. Men keep track of it by the growth of their beards. Uh, have you read Edgar Allan Poe? Well, he wrote a, a story about a man who was accidentally locked in a mausoleum, and he became completely disoriented. He imagined that he was dying of thirst, sensed hunger pains. And when they let him out, he'd gone mad. And he'd only been locked up a matter of a few hours. If you're going to tell me what you're doing here and who you're working for. I already told you. Now, don't try to bluff it out. You can save yourself a lot of discomfort. If I can just get to a phone, you can call my editor. 
Well, since you're a reporter, this will give you a first-person experience in sensory deprivation conditioning. I'll let Cody take care of you. He'll enjoy that. Don't go out with no ID and no makeup. And they don't fly around with one change of clothes with no labels in it. Are you sure no one saw you leaving with her? Positive. Nobody knows she's here. We've got all the time we need. We don't know how much time we have until we find out who she is. We'll find out. That is no teenager we have in there. We have to have some answers, and we have to have them now. We'll get them. All right. We'll try to wait for a while. Remember, my way always works. We have to know who she is and why she's here. After that, we can figure out what to do with her. No! 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 I... No! You don't talk, mister. Give me the bill. I can explain. Crap. No! 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 You see, you haven't told the truth since you got here. Yes, I have! Yes. But I'll tell you what. You will. You better tell us everything. We'll make you talk. He gets a kick out of it. When Lewin came in from Santa Barbara today to identify his son's body, he said the boy was terrified of going back to the foundation. But all he could say is that he was locked up alone for long periods. I know that. I've seen tough cons fall apart in solitaire. It's going to be heavy for the kid. Yeah. Oh, we don't even know if Curry saw the kid after he ran away. Yeah, he's careful. Probably snatches the kids and looks them over for a while before he calls the parents. Yeah. OK. You know that pea-brain Oaks lied to me? Cody doesn't show under the name he gave me. Strange. He knows you're going to run a make on him right away. Maybe he just doesn't appreciate our problems. There he is. I'll take the front, you take the back.
Keep up. Come on out. Come on out. I got it, big right. boy. Come on. Come on now. Bring him out. Come on. Come on, buddy. Oh. Hey. All right, hold it. Uh, that's terrific. Another 10 minutes, and I'd have been gone. What, you scared? You believe it. Come on. Come on. Uh, I'll tell you all I know. Just, just keep me out of it, okay? What about Curry? He's in it for the bucks. Cody, though, he's crazy. What did he do to the kids? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? They, they got a room underneath the gym. Where they keep the violent ones. They were the hard, the hard cases. They come out like zombies. Hey, why is that? I don't know. I just want it out. What the hell are you running away from us for? We got nothing on you. I don't trust cops. Besides, I figured you'd mention me to Cody. Check out the shrink that was on the foundation's help from it. Yeah? She turns out to be an outside consultant with a mail order degree in psychology. She's had meetings with Curry, but she's never been to the foundation and she's never worked with the kids. We dropped it someplace. Well, maybe it's not our move. Cell phone Pepper's room ransacked and reported there's a burglary. Now Pep's not answering her phone. Hello. Is she there, Bill? No, she's not here. That door was forced. It could have been a burglary. Oh, uh, Joe found Pep's car in the parking lot. Locked. I think we better get over that foundation. <sighs> there all night. She hasn't said a word. Turn the strobe on. Alternate the frequency. It'll keep her from resting. There's a public telephone two blocks down the road. Yeah, I know, but I, I got no change. And besides, it's a pretty frightening area around. I get a little scared. Come on, be nice. Be a sweetie pie. What did you say? Let me use the phone. You know, being big and muscly isn't everything. <laughs> You okay? Uh, 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 
Doctor. Child's all right physically. She's just a little disoriented. We're going to keep her here a few days for observation. Has anyone notified her parents that she's here? That's all been taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you. Gonna be okay, Pam. Pam, we notified your father. He's on his way over. He's very concerned about you. My father. He loves you very much. You're going to have to be making some decisions pretty soon. As soon as I get my head back together, I think I'll be able to hack it with my dad and a lot of other things. Well, that's good, because <laughs> I might not be around to bail you out next time. Yes, I know. <laughs> Bye, Pam. Bill Crowley may not be around to bail you out next time. <laughs> 